Hello, everyone. Hey, welcome to IstioCon, the virtual IstioCon 2023. Um, my name is Keith Maddox. And I'm John Howard. And we're going to be giving you a look at Istio's journey with the Gateway API. And if you don't know what the Gateway API is, you will also learn that during this talk. Uh, but before we get there, we need to understand where we're coming from. So I want to give kind of an overview of some of the history of Istio's traffic management APIs. So if you've used Istio for a while, I'm sure you're familiar with some of the Istio's kind of what we call the traffic management APIs. These are the gateway, the virtual service, the destination rule, kind of all these things that are configuring how traffic goes from point A to point B and kind of modifying properties along those. Um, but even before that, and currently in Kubernetes, there was this API called Ingress. And Ingress did a lot of these things, but it was all in one resource. And it was kind of this awkward fit of, it was so simple that everyone could adopt it, right? It was a single API that had multiple implementations, like Istio, Nginx, Cloud Load Balancer, like everyone's implementing the Ingress API. Um, but it's so simple that no one can actually use it in a real world environment to meet all of their needs, right? Uh, it's really constrained to just have one resource uh, handle everything. Like you have the same uh, single resource that's managing how routes uh, work, like, oh, the food path should go to the food service. But that exact same resource is also provisioning a cloud load balancer, which is like this highly privileged infrastructure admin operation. It's also managing certificates, which is probably somewhere in between the application and the infrastructure admin, right? So we have this mix of personas all bundled into this one API. And the API itself still is kind of too simple to meet all the use cases, right? There's no nothing like retries or timeouts or uh, I don't even think header-based matching, like all these kind of features that we we kind of want out of routing APIs wasn't there in Ingress. So it was a nice starting point, but it's not um, sufficient for long term. So that's what brought about the Eastu APIs. That's why Eastu had its own APIs uh, rather than using kind of the vendor-neutral Kubernetes standard Ingress one, right? Um, so gateway and virtual service kind of take the roles that were previously all in Ingress and split them apart. We have kind of the infrastructure layer, the gateway, which opens up ports, um, listeners, things like that. And then we have virtual services that attach to them and configure the routing. And also expose a huge array of functionality that used to provide that's not in the core of Ingress. Um, you know, things like cores, mirrors policy, uh, retries timeouts, like I mentioned. Uh, there's a whole assortment of things. Um, and additionally, destination rule, that's kind of completely new to, to Ingress. It's uh, kind of how we connect to a backend. So it may say, for example, that I want to use TLS when I connect to it, or I need to use a circuit breaking policy or any other, you know, uh, but again, there's a lot of options in these two APIs for uh, customizing um, uh, how traffic is routed, right? Um, so this is all great, right? We have a new API. It's a bit easier to use in Ingress due to the split of concerns. Um, we offer a lot more functionality. Everyone's happy. And to some extent, that's true, right? We have a lot of these two users, uh, hopefully a lot of happy these two users. Uh, but there's still a lot of issues with the API um, that I'll go into in a bit. So let me show just an example concrete uh, if you're not super familiar with the API. Here I show a gateway and a virtual service. And this is just doing kind of a simple case of I want to match a request on some external host name. Here I've got hbfn.example.com. Um, so in my gateway, I'm opening up this, uh, what we call a server. And then the virtual service will bind to that. We have this matching host here. And then we set up a few routes uh, for different APIs we expose. And we route them to our actual hbfn service on some, some internal port. Istio wasn't alone when it came to how it you know, experienced the Ingress API. There were various implementations all doing things slightly differently. And the you know, folks behind SIG Network saw this in the community and said, no, I think we can do better. And so around 2018, there was a user survey that was sent out to collect information and feedback about the Ingress API and what people wanted to see from networking APIs and Kubernetes. And from that conversation, the Gateway API was born. Uh, the Gateway API was introduced uh, by Kubernetes in order to attempt to build a, uni a unified service networking model. And big pieces of big areas of focus for the Gateway API is to learn from the mistakes of ingress and to try to be more just a lowest common denominator. 
So in Gateway API, you're going to see lots of things that weren't present in Ingress, such as a standard way to do a header modification, um, standard ways to do uh, traffic splitting, and things of that nature. And it's extensible by default. There is built into, into the specification a way to you know, create CRDs that follow a certain, uh, certain fit um, and have those be policy. So for example, you can configure a timeout policy within Gateway API and there's a, a standard way that that should look um, and, and things of that nature. And so the Gateway API recently graduated to beta and it's got at this, at the time of you know recording here, about 24 implementations. So it's this very widespread, widely adopted specification that is in use across multiple different networking platforms on top of Kubernetes. And uh, Istio, uh, similar to the upstream API, Istio has beta support for the Gateway API. So. You know, we talked about uh, one of the main benefits around persona-driven development here, but want to go through and talk about them a bit more in detail. So the first thing that you, first big benefit of the Gateway API is that now you've got a common ecosystem. Ingress had the same benefit as well, but the issue with Ingress was a lot of the the, the feature uh, lack of feature parity with custom implementation APIs such as such as Istio's. Uh, and so what you really saw is that people who wanted to build cloud native integrations had to do bespoke uh, bespoke code and bespoke workflows for each uh, for each ingress provider. But with Gateway API, the, the features are, are rich enough and the extension patterns are explicit enough that you can really have a common specification for, for integrations to plug into. Things like Cert Manager, Argo, and Flux, and typical GitOps workflows can target the gateway API uh, instead of implementation specific behavior in order to build uh, their ecosystem. Similarly, you know, when you're out trying to figure out how to accomplish traffic splitting or how to accomplish uh, header modification, if you look out at all the different ingress implementations from Nginx to Contour to Istio, you're going to find a ton of different APIs with different nuances and different um, and all kinds of different proxy implementations and things to keep in mind. But with Gateway API, by and large, you're able to share from the knowledge of different implementations. All the 24 implementations, when they have uh, support for the core Gateway API resources, you're able to benefit from those knowledge and the shape of things are going to look the same and the Helm chart's going to look similar and the documentation is going to look similar. And so you're able to benefit from multiple communities all rallying together uh, under the same platform and ecosystem. We alluded to this earlier, John did, about the different personas that are in use when you're deploying cloud native applications today. And one of the big friction points with Ingress was this overlapping and this coupling between different personas. So the application developer who just wants to expose a route on the application has to touch the same resource as the platform admin who wants to configure TLS, uh, or even the cluster admin, who, the cluster operator who needs to expose a new load balancer to, to expose traffic to the, to the internet. With Gateway API, those different uh, responsibilities and personas are broken up across different resources. And so with less coupling, you can have increased cohesion across your organization and have your application developers just focus on the routes to their services. And your cluster operators can focus on provisioning uh, gateways and provisioning um, infrastructure to expose traffic to the public internet. Each persona can have ownership over just the scope that they need to manage. And that you know, creates better efficiency uh, for teams who need to just write business logic and, th and get things done. And then lastly, and this is a, this is a really big one um, that John's going to talk to us a little bit more about in a second, but with Gateway API and Istio, you get automated gateway management. And, and what does that mean? Well, right now, the situation in Istio is a little bit split. You have to provision the service and the load balancer in a separate step from configuring it and programming it. Well, with Gateway API, by deploying the Kubernetes Gateway API gateway resource, you the Istio control plane is going to, to take that resource and create all the infrastructure in the background, and you only have one API that you have to deal with instead of instead of two. And so you really get this really nice, uh, really nice automation uh, and lifecycle management by adopting the Gateway API. And so John's going to talk to us a little bit more about that specifically here.
Yeah, so in the world, kind of uh, the old world with the old Eastview APIs, you would have kind of two parts if you want to deploy Gateway. First, you would have the installation, which is on the, the right side. This is the service the deployment. And you probably also have a few other things like roles and maybe uh, pod disruption budget, whatever. Uh, these are usually configured through Helm or maybe Eastview Cuddle install. And then in a completely separate operation, you deploy a gateway resource that programs that, right? And these things need to be in sync. So you can see I have these selectors um, that's matching the Eastio Ingress gateway. This is a pod label. So this pod label needs to be matched on the deployment, the service, and the gateway. And they also have some port numbers. Uh, these need to be matched as well, right? Now consider I want to add another port maybe to expose, expose my, my database. Um, you know, the obvious thing to do is go add it to the gateway, try to send traffic to it, and it doesn't work. Right. And the issue is, of course, it's not actually in my service. So my traffic is not able to go there. Like we've only configured one half of the story. Um, so the fix is obvious, right? I go add the port to the service. And it seems trivial, and it seems obvious. And in, to some extent, it is. But this is just a simple case. In the real world, I may have hundreds of these gateways. They may be managed by different teams than that managed the Eastro install. I maybe have one shared ingress gateway used by many different teams, or I may have multiple ingress gateways for each team or some combination of the two. Um, once we started getting into more and more complex things, uh, like target ports mismatching with the service port, like all these weird edge cases, it ends up getting quite complicated. And it kind of makes management and lifecycle of these two just a little bit harder. Um, is it the hardest thing in the world? Of course not, but there's a lot of these little cuts, and over time they add up uh, to a lot of friction, and in some cases could even cause like an outage or something. So with the Gateway API, like Keith mentioned, we've kind of improved this quite a bit. Absolutely. So with the Gateway API, as a user, you only have to interface and focus on a single resource. And here, uh, like in this example, you create the Gateway resource, you set the listeners, you say, I'm going to listen on this port, uh, on this protocol. And then what the system will do, the system will do is it will, uh, the, the, the service subsystem and the deployment subsystem of the Istio control plane are going to take that single resource and manage it for you and generate the accompanying deployment uh, and service and handle the life cycle of that infrastructure for you. And so with this gateway API approach, the configuration and the life cycle of the gateway are handled via a single resource instead of disparate resources spread out across, you know, across your cluster. Uh, and so going to the next slide for me, John, uh, taking that same example, you still have the listener that's defined. You're still saying that this gateway is going to be listening on port 80 of HTTP protocol, but instead of the user, you, the user having to go and synchronize the selectors and the ports, et cetera, across, two, uh, across multiple resources, now the system was going to take care of that for you. So if you wanted to change it and say, hey, I got a call from the security organization, we can't expose plain text ports anymore, and we have to move this to uh, TLS. And so if you change this listener from port 80 to 443, now the system is going to update that for you instead of you having to go to both resources and make the change and keep them up to date. And, and as John mentioned, uh, this sounds simple, but you spread this out across multiple organizations, uh, multiple organizations within your company, multiple different timelines, multiple different requirements, and this can cascade really quickly and lead to an outage or a, a hit in productivity. Yeah, before we move on from some of the benefits, we didn't have a slide for this, but I wanted to, to touch point on it. Like we showed this one example of one nice feature, um, and it is nice, it is great, but I think in general, the gateway APIs provide just a lot of small improvements over the Eastview APIs. In many ways, I see it as kind of taking the learnings of Eastio over the past five years or so, and as well as other projects, and then kind of iterating and learning on all the mistakes that we've made. And so a lot of these are really subtle. Like you, you may look at the two APIs side by side and say, those are basically the same. There's only surface level differences. But in many cases, these subtle differences all add up to make a very large user experience difference. And the gateway management is one example. Like, could we have done this with the East2 API? Maybe, but there's all sorts of edge cases that the East2 API exposed that made that really, really hard to do. 
that the Gateway API doesn't do, which is why we've enabled this only for the Kubernetes Gateway API. And the same thing applies for some other features as well. Like one common one is cross namespace certificate references. Uh, we've tried for quite a while to see how we can adopt that into the Easter API, but some of the namespace boundaries in the Easter API are a bit fuzzy, which makes it hard to do that securely. That's something that the Gateway API has improved upon, and so cross namespace references are available in Eastio with the Gateway API. And there's many of other cases of you know these minor improvements that add up to big user experience changes. So we can keep going on and on about the benefits, but we're gonna move on. So here's another end-to-end uh, -end example. So this is the same uh, gateway resource, just name tweaked a little bit uh, from the previous example on exposed on port 80. And now as an application developer with my cluster admin provision this for me, I can now expose a route to my HTTP, my HTTP bin application on this host name. And you know, we've got a couple of HTTP routes to status and delay, the same ones from the first example that John walked us through with the Istio APIs and route it back to HTTP bin uh, with a backend ref. So you see very similar functionality, uh, but with some very subtle user experience improvements that make things that are going to really add up and make things better uh, for organization. So, you know, we've been talking about Gateway API through the lens of ingress, right? Getting traffic from outside your cluster to inside your cluster. But, you know, around July of, of last year in 2022, the Istio community, you know, joined the Vanguard and, and, and was really part of this effort to use the Gateway API as a standard specification for mesh configuration as well. Similar to the ingress space, all the different meshes in the ecosystem have very similar but slightly different ways of doing the exact same things, routing traffic, um, setting up MTLS, authentication, authorization policy, things of that nature. And so several different folks from several different, uh, different communities came together um, in an effort called the Gamma Initiative. And uh, this is initially started between uh, SMI and Istio. And for the past year, we've been iterating on seeing how we can make a gateway API specification fit for east-west traffic, as well as that north-south outside of cluster, inside of cluster step. And as a gateway API version 080 that just released a couple of months ago, mesh support was officially added to the gateway API spec as experimental. And I'll, I'll note that you know, we were very purposeful about the way we went about doing this and no API changes were had to be made to get API res resources to get this to work. Um, the only changes so far uh, have been semantic. And so you'd be curious to see what this looks like in action. And so you've got this example here for you, um, that in HTTP routes, the same HTTP route that you would use to uh, program traffic from your ingress controller to your backend applications, use that same resource, but you're gonna change the parent ref of that resource. And instead of it being a gateway, we're going to say the parent wrap is a type as a kind service. And so this is the one of the really big, you know, the big shifts is that um, what this is going to do is it's going to say, hey, for traffic uh, destined to the service, we're going to route it to the following backend refs. And you can have, you know, various different kinds of rules, but here's a very classic example of traffic splitting between two different versions of the foo service. And so anything that's destined for traffic to, to service foo, we're going to send 90% of traffic to that actual service foo and then 10% of traffic to foo v2 in order to you know, get that the v2 version of the application up and running. You may notice here that you've got a backend, uh, you've got the service resource kind of doing two jobs. Uh, the service, uh, the service resource that's a parent ref is uh, kind of handling some of the matching logic, but service is also a backend ref for routing that traffic. John, what does this mean and, 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 and you know, how do I make sense of this? Yeah, it's, uh, this exact topic was kind of the root of a lot of contention in kind of designing how Gateway API could be used for Mesh. Um, if you look, I think last year at East2Con 2022, I had a talk on Gateway API and I touched on Mesh and I think I probably said something like Mesh is experimental or something. And Keith just said Mesh is now experimental as of this month. So what happened in that one year? Um, well, we iterated quite a bit, and this is where we, we arrived, right? And this iteration involved this diagram times a thousand for every possible way we could possibly model how to represent service mesh 
traffic in the Kubernetes Gateway API, right? Um, so it may seem simple in the end, but this was like the result of years of it, well, one year of iteration, um, and this is kind of where we arrived. So the issue we have with service, and remember, these two is a service mesh, so we generally are concerned with how we interact with services and how we kind of modify the behavior of services, right? That's largely what we're trying to do when we have a HTTP route or a virtual service, and that's kind of in the mesh mode. We're taking a service that was traditionally just a layer four TCP service, has no kind of special routing rules, and we're kind of upgrading it to an HTTP service that has all sorts of customizations that we've added, right? Uh, but service is more than just one thing. It's one object, but it kind of has two roles, what we kind of call the service front end and the service back end. Uh, so the service front end is like, how do I identify calls to the service, or how does a client reach the service? So this is like the DNS name, the you know example.service.cluster.local or the cluster IP. Um, but then it also is a kind of collection of backends, a collection of pods or kind of the endpoints or endpoint slices. Um, and in classical Kubernetes without a service mesh, those are tightly coupled, right? If you reach the front end, then you reach the back end directly. What Gateway API or even virtual service allows us to do is say, I want to match on this front end, but then customize the behavior, right? So here I've attached a route to the service A front end. Um, I'd be using like an attachment like this, a parent ref. Here it's foo in this slide, I think it's A. Um, so I attach a route here, and now I'm overriding how I want to handle traffic to that service. So the client still calls service A, but now I'm following this route. And this route may, for example, split between service AV1 and service AV2. Uh, if you want to hear more about this, uh, Tim Hawken gave a lightning talk all about service and kind of the problems with it um, earlier this week. So feel free to check that out. Um, so this is one of the core problems that we wanted to solve in the Gateway API. We think we did a reasonable job solving it, um, as long as you're OK with accepting that service is one object with two roles. Um, and as you can see, again, in the example, we have the front end role here in parent ref, and then the back end role here in back end refs. Gateway API in Ambient. So if you're if you're not familiar with Ambient, you probably haven't been watching the other talks because I'm sure that over half of them are about Ambient. Um, and same with all the Istio blog posts, Istio tweets, everything's all about Ambient these days. Uh, but I'll give a quick summary. So Istio Ambient is kind of a new data plane mode that instead of using sidecars, the traditional deployment model, we've kind of split the service mesh proxy into two layers. On each node, we have what we call the Z-tunnel, which is kind of the node encryption layer. And it really doesn't do much. It's just augmenting the, the cluster uh, networking stack to add encryption and a few other enhancements um, so that we can maintain the zero trust properties with mutual TLS that we want to use to. Uh, but the, the core of it is really these waypoint proxies that run external to the application, uh, typically in the cluster, but in theory, they could run anywhere. And these are standalone pods that kind of do the work that the service mesh sidecar proxies used to do, but now they're standalone. And the Gateway API plays a key role in this, right? The waypoint proxies are actually represented as gateways. Um, you know, oftentimes in our docs, we're deploying them with an Istio Cuddle helper command. I think it's Istio Cuddle waypoint apply or something similar. But under the hood, that's actually just creating a gateway object, just like we did in the past examples. Um, and so it is a gateway. It has a few special properties. It has its own gateway class, uh, which we touched upon, which is, a, you know, kind of a qualifier for what type of gateway it is. But ultimately, it's very similar and uses the same APIs. Um, as the you would for ingress. Um, in fact, you can actually do, I have a blog post about like what would waypoint, what would it, that architecture look like if there was an ambient and how you could kind of do it the hard way. Um, and you can check that out if you're interested. Um, so just like a normal ingress gateway, we have routes that can attach. Um, we have policies that can attach. So for example, we may want to apply an authorization policy. Uh, these will attach to the gateway, whether it's a waypoint or an ingress gateway. Um, and yeah, so like, you know, this is kind of the the two I think main 
focuses and projects going on at Istio is really the ambient uh, mode and the gateway API. And these two are also uh, very tightly linked. I can wrap us up here. Um, so like John was saying, gateway API is the encouraged ingress approach for Istio moving forward. Um, you know, mesh support is currently experimental, but the Istio community is um, you know, currently investing uh, to pushing that spec forward. And uh, we hope for it to, to one day be the kind of out of the box default um, for Istio. And our goal as we go through this process is to try to match the stability of the upstream gateway API. So we try, you know, through our, through our involvement in both communities, uh, Istio and gateway API, well, whenever gateway API hits a milestone, we try to match that milestone relatively soon afterwards. And uh, like John just said, Ambient Mesh utilizes Gateway API for its waypoint proxies. Uh, in, and this, you really see the marrying of these two um, new innovations and these two concepts within Istio um, that we are putting a lot of focus in right now. Uh, this means, you know, this you know, Ambient Mesh using Gateway API means that policies are going to uh, bind to the waypoints, um, which is a little bit different than you know what you might be used to in Istio, where you use workload selector to bind to workloads. You know, in Ambient policies uh, will be binding to to waypoints as in, in general. And um, we also see we talked about two different roles of service, which might be your first time uh, hearing about it. And so, service when you see service as a parent ref in a HTTP route or any kind of route in Gateway API it's going to refer to the front end role, uh, which typically corresponds to the DNS name that is uh, provisioned inside your cluster as well as the cluster IP. And when you see service being used as a backend ref, uh, that refers to the service, that's a typo there, uh, the service backend role. So the, the bag of endpoints the, uh, that are provisioned by the Kubernetes API server uh, based on usually a, a selector of some sort. So that's the kind of Istio's journey uh, with the Gateway API. Hopefully this was really informative and we'd love for you to, to try out these features um, in Istio. Uh, Gateway API, uh, again, is uh, in beta support and ambient uh, mesh uh, is, is in alpha. Uh, and the Gateway API mesh support is experimental. So various different, you know, there, for, there's something for everybody, uh, no matter what level of maturity that your organization is at, uh, we've got something for you to try out and give us feedback. So. Really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Yeah, like you said, thanks everyone. And we'll be around to answer any questions or you can reach us on Slack. There's a Gateway API channel. We'd love to hear any questions or feedback. If you like it, you don't like it, if you have issues, whatever, uh, your feedback's super useful. So thanks everyone. Appreciate it.